am Chaz Bryant. This is the man, Mike Cornbread Allen. Uh, I, I'm getting straight to the point because it's the sixth anniversary, mm -hmm. Fight Lab 45. If you don't have your ticket by the time this comes out, you are just about SOL. We say that every time. But folks, I, I think this one's uh, this this is the granddaddy. This is this one's big. This yeah. is this one you can wet your pants over. This one. You're gonna go home and you're like, did you see what happened at this one? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, shake the dog whenever I, I come home. Actually, the last she one, me. the last one was the granddaddy. This is the great, great granddaddy. Yeah, it was a sellout last time, yeah. and it was just about close to a sell, if not a sellout. The one before that one, I think this one, this one, Fight Lab 45 anniversary. Everybody's gonna be dressed to the nines, tuxes, uh, tuxedos, ballroom gowns, ballroom gowns, yeah. uh, light orchestra music. Yes. Absolutely. Ricky Rainey and Jeff Gemmo will be parking cars. Oh, outside. They, they will be. Valet out there. Valet, valet will be. You're going to have your valet drive up. and <laughs> I want to see this. Drive your, your car up there. I, I'm going to have my valet drive up. This is exciting. I'll be taking my carriage. They'll be bringing me You've in. You've got a carriage Yeah, now. carriage. Eight horses. Eight horses. Yeah. yeah. So Kenny well, Letts has, has given you two uh, more horses than last time now for this yes. one. Yeah, he's trying to make up for the 40 acres of mule, but we'll, we'll talk about that later on. <laughs> how, how excited this is, is this to reflect, uh, you've been doing it for six years, 45 chefs. I don't think there's any other uh, promotion in the southeast uh, who's up to 45 shows. Maybe Wild Bill's is close. I've seen other guys get to 20. You guys are in 45. Yeah, yeah, 45, and uh, probably the, the biggest thing is not that we're, we're at 45, but that we're at 45 and we've kept our brand intact and we've been, um, we've been consistent. You know, no matter where we go, you know, we've put good numbers in the house and provided exciting fights. So that's, uh, that really means more to me than the actual number itself. So. Uh, absolutely, you guys, you know, there haven't been a, a time where you guys stalled out for a couple of months that you guys have been just been clicking along, especially the last two or three years. You guys have been pretty consistent about having the fight. Uh, if not every month, but every third month or something like that. Yeah. So you guys are being hats off to you for the, the, all, the whole crew, the whole crew of Tom, uh, Randy, Kenny, all the other investors who put on this company. It's something to, to really be proud about. Yeah. And I'm yeah. glad to be part of it too. Yeah, de definitely congratulations to uh, me and Tom and Kenny and, and uh, I think you're probably, you, you, you and A-Rod are probably the only supporting <coughs> cast that's been with us from the beginning, aren't you? No, I, I think I came in right in the teens somewhere. Right so in the teens? Yeah, okay. 15 well, I know A-Rod's been with us from uh, from the first day, and uh, you know, it's, it's, been a, it's been a long ride. You know, we, we've, we've definitely gained a lot of people's respect, uh, had a lot of conflict with, uh, <laughs> with a lot of people, unfortunately, but uh, you know, we've survived, and we, we plan on being here. Uh, and we picked up a lot of good help along the way, so uh, we're fortunate. I'm not going to go into any double entendres that you mean there, because I think it, I think it's time. I think the people are waiting. They're, they're they're waiting. They're sitting there with their pen and paper ready to go. They're they're calling in the kids. Mm -hmm. Grandma is putting on a pot of coffee. Yeah, the neighbors have been phoned. I think it's time to do some picks here. <laughs> Are you ready for some picks? We're ready for some picks. Let's do it. Because you changed something up on me, and I just now can't remember because I, I haven't had my pot of coffee. Remember, folks, this uh, these fights are competition, not an exhibition, so wagering is thoroughly encouraged. It's six-year anniversary, so place big bets here. Big money on this one. Big money. Uh, no less than 2000 Oh, mercy. Well, that's – and make sure you send part of it our way. Uh, this was changed. It was William Maddox versus Jonathan Martin. It is now – William Maddox versus Nassim Jones. Nassim Jones. Yeah. Uh, what do we know about these two guys? I want your pick for those. Uh, William Maddox trains at uh, Superior MMA uh, with Roger Carroll, and he also trains with uh, Scott White and George White, who have the really cool nicknames. I think one of them is named X-Men, another one's named, I don't know, Nightcrawl or something like that. Yeah, that's part of X-Men, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, those, those are his instructors, I think. But uh, I've seen William in the grappling circuit. He's a young man, 18 years old, 19 years old. Uh, he's competed against my son in several grappling tournaments. Did he beat him? Uh, no. <laughs> Did you say that with a straight face? No, I didn't. No <laughs> offense to William Maddox fans, but no, he didn't. Oh, okay. uh, but uh, talented young man. You know, despite, you know, he's always a good match for, for my son uh, grappling. And uh, I hear he's a really good uh, striker. You know, I would have to 
expect that is you know, has some type of form of Muay Thai training sure. coming with Roger and Scott. Uh, and then on the other side is uh, he's actually going to go against one of my students, uh, Nassim Jones, who's also 18 years old. In fact, Nassim is still in hi high school. Holy cow! How's yeah. that even possible? Legal? Um, I guess once you reach 18, just about. Yeah, I, I think Nassim started school late, uh, mm -hmm. and and William has graduated school, but he's 18 also. So we've got our two. Uh, I think this is the two youngest competitors to have fought each be. other. Now, we, we've had Trey Singleton, obviously, turned 18 on his birthday. Uh, he fought for us, but uh, he fought old man Derek Hyde. <laughs> um, so it's, it's going to be fun, man. And the great thing about kids that age, you know, they don't get tired and they're fearless. So uh, we're going to look forward to, to an awesome, awesome competition. And, you know, my biggest thing for both of them, because I like William. Obviously, I love Nassim. He trains here with me. But, uh, you know, both of them go out the same way they came in. So... I'm, I'm going to go with Nassim because he's my student, but uh, definitely going to be fireworks. That, that's fine. And, and the fights are regulated by uh, the North Carolina Boxing Commission, so it is a legal fight since yes. they're uh, We're going to move on to some women in there. Tiffany Lee out of Modern Warrior MMA down in Rock Hill, South Carolina. She's 1 0. Going against uh, Caroline Cornell. She is a debut inside the cage. Uh, what do you know about this? Um, Tiffany Lee, she's. Uh, one of those angry midgets that, that fight out of Modern Warrior yeah. with that other little angry midget that, that uh, you hang out with, Keith Richardson. I don't hang out with him. You don't hang out with him? No. I don't either. That's just, just associates. <laughs> just associates. But, uh, you know, I, I, I've seen her grapple at tournaments. She yeah. seems to have a, a decent wrestling base, seems to be a strong young lady. Um, and Caroline Cornell, she comes out of a top tech team up in Virginia. Top tech team? Yeah, top tech team. And uh, that's uh, where Tony Gravely and uh, some other people that's competed on our uh, Christian Leonard, you know, really tough school, uh, good strikers, good grappling. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be tough. I I've never seen Caroline Cornell fight because it's her debut, so I'm going to have to go with Tiffany Lee. But, man, I'm looking forward to it. Female fights are always fun. Uh, what's it about the – side side note, what, what's it about the Virginia guys coming down here to fight? Is that uh, more – Better competition, more better regulations, less regulations type thing? Uh, you know, on, on their end, I can't speak for them as to why they come down here, uh, I, I would have to assume, because we, we, we put on a good good show and, you know, we're professional. Right. Uh, I, I think some of it may be that, uh, that it's more re closely regulated okay. here in North Carolina, but I know on our end, the reason we bring uh, specifically that school uh, is because they're one of the, you know, they're, they're constant professionalism from a top top tech team with uh, Perry Gibson, their coach. And, and when I say that, I don't just mean uh, the fact that they can fight, because they can, but also the fact they're always on time. If they commit to something, they do it. If they pull out, I know it's serious. Sure. Uh, and, you know, th those schools are far and few these days to, to be able to do business with. Absolutely. Uh, moving on, we got Josh Steedley. Josh the Steed Steedley versus Brian Davis. Josh comes in at 2-2. Two and two. Brian comes in at 1-0. Oh. I believe Josh uh, got a win. Uh, the last fight lab at uh, Fort Bragg. Yes. If I'm correct. Yep. Uh, who do you got for that one? Uh, well, I mean, just to get it out, you know I'm going to pick Josh just because he's from Team Rock, Fettville, and th those guys are special. Stay team. on the good side of Team yeah. Rock. Yeah, I, I like those guys. You know, 82nd Airborne, sure. uh, you know, they protect our asses, so I'm, I'm always going to pick them even if I think they're going to lose. It doesn't matter. But uh, well, Steedley, you know, started off 0-2. Mm -hmm. He's ran off uh, two consecutive victories, 2-2. Two two. Uh, he, he's on the come up, and actually – you know, I told him originally if he won this fight that uh, that I, I would look into giving him a title shot. So I, I think with Brian Davis, you know, I, I don't know a lot about him. He's coming from Boondocks MMA. Uh, come, come, I think he's out of Boone, North Carolina, okay. uh, up at App State. Uh, I know they're, uh, they're an affiliate of uh, Hubao, Carioca, uh, the Gracie Baja Black Belt. Okay. And um, yeah, he looks to be a really athletic kid, looks to be really tough. Uh, he, he told me he usually fights 35. But uh, he would take this fight at 45 because he just wanted to get on the show. I'm looking forward to having him and, and uh, being able to branch out and, and keep him on the card. But for this fight, strictly out of you know my my friendship and my likeness for uh, Team Rock, I'm going to go with uh, Steedley. But from what I understand, wouldn't be surprised to see Brian Davis coming in and upset him. Because yeah, I remember, I believe uh, Josh made his debut up there at the Cherokee fight. Yes. If I'm correct. A little controversial uh, knockout there. But... Uh... Good for him. Uh, see, see how his uh, career progressed. I believe this is like the, he's in his first year yeah. of competing. So another yeah. young buck uh, making his way up. Shante Barnes, I believe, comes up there from uh, 
Triple G. Yes. Triple G, uh, uh, he's at 1-1. One and one. He's going up against Ernest Robinson, who's at 0-1 oh right now. What do you got in this one? Man, this is uh, this is gonna be good. Number one, Shante Bar uh, Barnes lit is he's coming from Triple J. That's his school, yeah. but he lives in Lake Junaluska. I was born in Waynesville. Lake Junaluska is actually part of Waynesville, so I'm gonna go with him just because. <laughs> just because. Yeah. He lives yeah, that, in that yeah. Yeah, exactly. incorporation. Hey, look here, man. When you're dealing with one and o, o and one amateur, I mean, who knows? <laughs> so uh, one and o versus o and one. I mean, hell, for all I know, they could, they could be UFC fighters. This guy's in a, you know, just their first fight, first couple fights. But uh, I know Shantae comes from a boxing background, has really good striking. Ernest Barnes, on the other hand, interesting enough, comes from a pro wrestling background. Uh, so it, no, it's, it, yes, different. it's going to be interesting. And both of them, you know, they took a lot of tickets. They seem to have a lot of fans come and support them. I think Shantae Barnes has somewhere like 50 to 70 people coming. Holy. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Kenny Hill also came from a pro wrestling background. If I'm yeah. Saying. Yeah, and he had a, he had a real fun uh, he had a real fun entrance. Remember when he fought JJ Brantley? Yeah, come out with the pink shorts on. He still wears the pink shorts. He still wears the pink shorts. I think so. If I'm correct, yeah, he's suntan so. Superman. The suntan Superman. There's a plug for you there, Kenny Hill. <laughs> who, who loves you? Us right here. Uh, I think we're going to move into some title fights, and I'm going to get one of these names wrong, but I apologize. You got Mel for Jeter. Uh, fought last time up there in Cherokee. He's at four and one. He's going against. Draco, I am not, you, you know how to pronounce T it. Tell you what, we'll just call him Draco. Draco, you know who you are. You're the guy from uh, Israel, if I'm correct. I thought it was Russia. Russia, whatever. Same place. Okay. One's south and one's north and one's big and has bears. I, I didn't say that. He said that. So. I thought it was, okay. Russia, Israel. <laughs> I, I, it, I, I, I'm, I've been looking over. It's Mushadin, Alcab. Uh, I'm just gonna. It's a fail for me. Yeah, it's a fail for him. Yeah. R regardless, <laughs> you got you got two of the top 170 pounders in the state uh, going for the Fight Lab welterweight title. Uh, Malfoy Jeter, I think, comes in at five and two, five and one. Uh, I got four and one. This is from MixedMartialArts.com. So yeah, I actually, I actually think he's five and okay. one uh, versus uh, Mujahideen. And I believe and he's the uh, king of Jacksonville. He's the king of Jacksonville welterweight champion. I've been trying to get him on the card for a long time. I'd have preferred that we had him in there, you know, get some of our former champions, but sure. things never did work out. Uh, he comes in with an eight and two record. Very, very good wrestler. Uh, tough, great <laughs> cardio seems to have, and, and seems to be very straightforward and and uh, not afraid to exchange. Which with Malford Jeter, that that that's going to be a risk because Malford has bombs in his hands. Yeah. Interesting fact about Malford is he's actually over 40 years old, and uh, so he's going to have a lot of people in the crowd cheering for him. Uh, but don't let his age fool you guys because he's he's a tough. Tough old man. Yeah, I was gonna say the two fights I've seen him up there in uh, Cherokee. He, yes. he whooped up on uh, some of the young bucks up there. Yeah, he's been known to beat rounds. a man's ass. Can he? Do you think he can go all uh, five rounds here? You know, I, I don't think that their fighting is built for them to go five rounds. Okay. I, I think this is gonna be one of those that ends within the first two, and uh, I'm gonna have to go with uh, uh, Malfoy Jeter okay. by knockout. By knockout. By knockout. Is that the first knockout we're gonna see? Do you think there's going to be a lot of knockouts in uh, this I, card? I really think there is. I think they've got, you know, I, I think the fight prior to that, I think Shantae Barnes and Ernest Robinson, I, I think that if uh, I think if Shantae wins, he, he's probably going to win by knockout. Cool. He's got dynamite in his hands, too. Malford has, I mean, you're talking about two guys, they have extensive amateur boxing. Uh, and, and you know, their footwork is on point, and, and, they, and they, they train a lot of striking. So uh, you don't want to be standing in front of them, which is a mistake a lot of MMA fighters uh, make. That, so. that's, that's why I don't do MMA. It's just, I don't want to get hit. I, I understand. I don't, I don't want to get hit either. I don't do a very good job though, as much as I talk about people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move on to Isaac Artis versus Marco Fuentes. Uh, hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. Uh, Isaac Artis still looking for his, for his first win uh, versus Marco, who is uh, right now 1-0. Uh, Isaac, the Padawan artist, Padawan. one of the more interesting walkouts we've ever had in Fight Lab history when he came out with the lightsaber in Fort that, so It was only interesting on your part for stealing the lightsaber. Hey, man, I saw a toy. I want to play with it. And, and the referee took it from him, remember? Yeah, When, when he came to get greased up, he couldn't play with the toy yeah. no more. I don't need to let a good toy go to waste. So I went and got the lightsaber. And you're, I'm going to get it this time, too. And I'm zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah, I'm going to have a good time, man. It's all about having fun at Fight Lab. I was going to say, you have way too much fun. Taking mm, man, I've had a blast. Uh, but yeah, P Padawan, and you know his last fight, I was really impressed with the fact. Went up against uh, Steedley. Steedley. He went up against Steedley, and you know, talking to Padawan, he told me 
uh, very few people want to exchange with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said he thought Steely would, would pull the trigger on the takedown, and he didn't. And they went all three rounds striking, and it was a it was an interesting, fun fight to watch. He fought hard, so we brought him back. He's working on his jiu-jitsu, uh, which I hope he's worked on it extensively, extensively because Marco Fuentes comes from Section Eight, oh. and uh, they're they're known yeah. for their uh, their jiu-jitsu done with Chad Stevens and their wrestling. Uh, I'm as as much as I would love to see Isaac get his first win on the Fight Lab card. Uh, I'm gonna go with Marco Fuentes, but I mean I wouldn't be surprised if, if Isaac pulled it out because it, it, he's 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 a come up guy and, and he's young. I, I was gonna say he's been the last couple, I think two fights I've seen out of him. He's been real close. He's taken guys mm -hmm. to at least the uh, decision win. Yes. Where usually uh, I think the first couple of fights they're all within the the, the three rounds, and uh, I think a couple of them been in the first round. Yeah. So it's good to see him. Get and you gotta look close. at and you gotta look at some of those losses too, man. Like some of those losses he had, man. Matchmakers was putting him in there at like 155 yeah. and stuff like that. He's not a he's 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 a small he's he's still a kid. He's still growing. He's not a 55 pounder. Yeah, I was gonna say, and he's been a couple of the guys he's been in the cage with are pretty good guys. It was uh, uh, of course Steely. I think he went up against Shelton Sales and lost. And yes. I think he went against uh, Luke Milligan. L yeah, Luke Milligan. Yeah. Three. Three. So Those are three horses. Yeah, so he's, it's not, nothing to uh, shake your head about. Those are some terrific guys he's got up against. Uh, moving on, we got uh, Chase Calloway versus Adam Rodriguez. Chase Calloway. At 125 pounds. 120. Are you sure it's at 125? I'm joking. It's 135. Okay. Don't, don't scare that little guy out there. I know he's been fighting to get back in the cage. Do you think that little bit of a layoff for him? Because uh, he was pretty upset. Uh, the last one, whenever uh, it was, man, he was looking angry. Like, he was giving me the evil eye. I would too. J just for walking down the street, I would give him the evil eye. I was scared. <laughs> I get scared a lot, man. You don't understand. I get threatened like every show. In my show, I get threatened. They like, but, but is it is it wrong? Is my thing. It, it, do they have a point whenever they say bread this time? Because you're over here, I'm, I'm looking at the camera. Right, moving. bread. You mess with me one more time. I know. I'm gonna I get know. you. I know. Well, you're right. You're, you're, you're right. It's, it's, it's not wrong. And, and, and Chase had every reason to be upset. If you don't know what we're talking about, Chase was supposed to fight Adam Rodriguez on our last card at 125 pounds. Adam thought it was 135 pounds. I don't know what I thought it was. I thought it was like 165 pounds, <laughs> and the fight got canceled. And it was actually the second fight that Chase had been booked on our yeah. card. And uh, so Chase was pretty upset, and uh, he, he had a temper, temper. I don't want to call it a tantrum. He had a temper show. And uh, he was going to beat me up, and I apologized immediately. Next time, do it, Chase. Up. Nobody's going to stop you. I'm certainly not. I'll have a video camera roll. Yeah, nobody will stop you. No. But Chase is coming off the loss. Last time he fought, I believe he was they, for the they time. Chase is shorter than me. And for shorter so people, what? I get Keith Richardson on. So what? I get, I get, I, Keith's my bodyguard to get short people. <laughs> Keith will more than likely <laughs> freely open the door up for that butt whipping to happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, but Chase Galloway. Uh, fought Josh uh, Josh Smith for the title last in his mm -hmm. last fight. Uh, came up short on that one. No pun intended. Came up short. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see out of uh, these two guys this time? Hey man, I, me personally, I don't see anything changing from the last time they was gonna fight and I picked. I'm going with Chase on this. Uh, Chase is talented, man. He's he's a very talented kid. He trains with some tough guys, and uh, though he doesn't want to admit it, he's a big 25 pounder. He cuts a lot of weight. Uh, and, and every time he fights, you know, he's growing because he's a young man. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just I don't think Adam Rodriguez can keep up with Chase's wrestling. But from what I understand, you know, I know Adam's straight off of a win, and, and he people tell me his wrestling's good. So we'll see. Two Nats going at it that can wrestle. I like watching the Nats. I like the Nats. The nats are, nats are cool. fast, man. They remind me when I was in middle school at 125 pounds. Fast. Was you fast? Uh, stocky. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not at all. That was not bad. Uh, moving on to Eric Martinez. Uh, Eric Martinez trains at this uh, very old facility. I don't see him around here. Is yours. Eric Martinez over there? Yep. No? No, he's not. No, we're picking Eric to lose. Okay. But he's fighting Israel the Anvil Mendoza. Who's that one in um, You just said the uh, Eric's going to lose. He's not a practice. He's not a practice. As he showed up. I can't think of not seeing me at practice either. Changed my pick. I'm picking William Maddox. Going back on it. William Maddox now for the win. Yeah, I guess you got a moral story. You got to show up. 
I actually changed that because Ricky Rainey adds practices so he don't have to come to my practice. Him and Jeff Jimmo. So, <laughs> rewind that again. I'm picking Nassim Jones because Ricky added a practice that didn't exist. And I'm picking Eric Martinez over Israel Mendoza because Jefferson Jimmo. That's J-I-M-M-O. Jimmo. Was he at his practice, though? Huh? Was he at his practice, though? Uh, Eric, was he at Jimmo's practice? No. No. Was no. he at but you don't, you don't know when Jim and Sniper practices. They hide things. Well, how can they get in the building? This is my whole That's thing. irrelevant. It's like getting in the building. Okay? <laughs> getting in the building is not an intricate part to practice. Don't worry about that. Okay. We're going to move on to another title fight. You got John Henning versus Kyle Martin. Kyle Martin oh, trains oh, up Muay there. Thai. I'm going to edit With that. Chris Claudfelter. Yes. Coach Claudfelter. Crew Claudfelter. And uh, John Henning trains down there at uh, East Coast. John Henning trains at uh, East Coast, Charlotte Jiu-Jitsu, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the name. They keep changing. Well, they're in a nice facility. Have you been by there yet? It is a nice facility. Nice facilities are an intricate part of being successful <laughs> no, in MMA. No, no, no. John Henning comes in at, at 5-4. and four. Kyle Martin comes in undefeated at 4-0. and oh. What do you got in this one? Man, that's going to be a tough fight. A lot of experience with John Henning. Uh, you know, John's another one of them guys. He started fighting really young. He did. Uh, he's, been, he's he's made a journey around a lot of gyms. He actually stops by here and trains sometimes. Uh, I, last couple fights I've seen him, he seems to have matured a, a lot, and uh, his game seems to be coming full circle. You know, for where he's at in his career, and his body is matured. That's the biggest thing when you're dealing with young people who start early. Uh, Come on. Kyle Martin's a stud, though. I was gonna say he's a pretty stocky yeah. guy right there. Kyle, Ma Kyle Martin is the real deal. You know, Chris Klausfelder has called me a lot of times over the years and told me a lot of stuff about a lot of these guys. But these guy, this guy, Kyle Martin, is a he's a he's a stud, like S T U D stud. <laughs> He, he kicks things, he grabs things, and he puts them down. I was gonna say you try to butter up to him now or something like that. Or? Well, I want him to fight again if he wins our okay. damn title belt. I don't want him to leave like everybody else does. Don't leave. I don't want any conflict. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll quit saying that. <laughs> My pick for this fight. I think uh, I think John Henning may derail the train. I'm gonna go with John. All right. I'm gonna go with the Charlotte boy. Charlotte boy with the the hair bun. Have you seen the hair bun? I, went, I talked to him earlier today. The hair bun? Yeah, he's got the samurai looking. Uh, Rolled up. Okay, never mind. I'm changing my pick. <laughs> I'm going with Kyle Martin. No, he's got yeah, the, I'm going with Kyle Martin. He's got the little ponytail. I'm going with Kyle Martin. I never said anything about picking John Henning. In fact, I was threatened by Kenny Litz because John sells a lot of Kenny's not even here. Will you shut up? He's not even here. I never pick a man with a hair bun. <laughs> uh -oh. I'll pick it, John. This is the first time I make a pick. I like John. I like Kyle Martin. Kyle I Martin. hope you guys aren't putting money on any of these based off of what we I say. hope you do. I hope you put a lot of money, then you go to a, a court, and sometimes uh, uh, move on to another title fight. Uh, Tony Gravely versus Billy Alexander. Billy Alexander oh, from Correct comes out of the, uh, he, he has the title in hard play. Ooh. He must be a very good fighter. Billy Martin's at four and oh. Cal, uh, Tony Gravely is at three and one. What do you think about these two two guys? Actually, Not, more Nats, if I'm correct. I, I, actually, Tony Gravely's five and one. He's from Virginia, man. They like. They mess up everything. For they me. like create fights up there. Well, that's cool. Yeah, you just can't see them. <laughs> it's like abracadabra. <laughs> <laughs> you never yeah. know with those guys. Yeah. Noe Quintanilla is like 30 and. 60 or something shows up only as like 10 and 20 yeah, here so in North Carolina. But anyways, Tony Gravely, All-American wrestler from App State University, uh, has just been dominant in every fight I've seen. I mean, he, he's like Kyle Martin. He's a STUD <laughs> stud. <laughs> but he can't, he can't put the guy with the hair bun. Yeah. So uh, I mean, Tony Gravely's impressive. I mean, he's an impressive young man. Really good top control. Uh, his, his striking isn't bad. Much better than what you would think coming from somebody with that extensive of a uh, wrestling background. And uh, Billy a Alexander. Was that a Carroll school? Okay. Out of Hodger Carroll School. P Professor Hodger. Is that, a, is that a Brazilian pronunciation of yeah. it? Okay, I just <laughs> Professor want to make... Hodger Carroll, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, and Billy Alexander is a stud. I mean, he, he's a stud, too. Th this is going to be a good fight. I, I don't know who's going to win this, and I want to take my mulligan on this one. All right. now, I don't think I gave him to you this time, but that's fine. How many did I get on this? Three? <laughs> maybe, I'm only, maybe two. Maybe if two? If you're lucky. 
Fuck no, forget that. Like forget that. I'm not going. I, I'm not using my mug, and I'm a man. It, it's a six year anniversary. I'm a man. This is like six year anniversary. I don't have to take a mug. No. You guys are coming to my show. Okay? I'm picking Tony Graver. I'm going to go off the wrestler. Wrestler. I like it. I yeah. like it. He's a wrestler. Jeremy Holloway versus Wayne Martin. Wayne Martin making his a professional mixed martial arts debut. Had a great uh, track record in the amateurs, 5-0. Yes. Uh, uh, wins going against Jeremy Holloway, who fought uh, probably about less than a month by the time this one happened. Uh, the concert. The yes. William Show, yeah. yeah. Here in Charlotte at our label. Put on, a, put on a great performance. He did. It was a flying knee. Flying knee. And then he, even more impressive, as much height as he got on the flying knee, he got even more height when he jumped over the cage like a moron and got suspended. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to say, did he fine or did he suspended for that? Because he can't do those. Yeah, he, he, can't can't do that. he can't do that. Case. But he did get suspended, obviously, because he's now fighting Wayne Martin. And let me backtrack. Uh, I changed my mind again. I can do that because it's my show. I am doing some mulligans, and I'm going to put it on this one. Uh, because I really don't know who's going to win this because Wayne Martin is a very good striker, trains with a very good team uh, out at Team Rock mm -hmm. with uh, Jordan Rinaldi and Rodney Wallace and Jeremy Perdue. Uh, those guys can strike, they can they can grapple, they can they can kick, they can I mean like they so do the, it all. So the whole the whole, thing, thing. whole package of mixed martial arts. Whole package are in good shape, you know. And Wayne wears glasses. He does. Does he? Yeah. I which makes him smart. Well, I mean, you're the only person I know that wears glasses that's not smart. But everybody else that wears glasses is smart. We know this for a fact. It's proven. Where's, proven. Uh, where's Van Estes? In, uh, Van Karen? Estes doesn't wear glasses. He's not smart. Karen, why, no. why isn't he sitting in the seat so I have he, no he idea. can take this punishment? So Wayne Martin, uh, talented striker, making his pro debut, 5-0 as an amateur. I will say this, though. As good as he, his record suggests he is as an amateur, and he is a good fighter. Yeah. He didn't fight the level of competition that most people get if they're five and zero and they fought so many times on a fight lab show. Usually, most. In other words, I was wanting Wayne to fight for our amateur title, and I think he probably would have won it. Mm -hmm. uh, but he would have probably had the least resistance. Yeah, to, to win the title. And it, and it was for lack of competition. Sure. It, it's sort of been a drought at that weight class. You know, his teammate Jeremy Perdue was our champion, and, I mean, he fought freaking horses. I mean, Jeremy Perdue, Adam Dehart, all those guys yeah. that was our middleweight amateur champion fight lab, they had very stiff competition. Wayne didn't really have that stiff competition, number one, because he's very good. But number two, I couldn't really find anybody to test him. I'm just going to be honest with you. And... Uh, you know, he's, he's definitely never faced anybody like Jeremy Holloway because Jeremy Holloway, as we saw with that flying knee, is one of the more athletic people that's ever come into MMA in North Carolina, I mean by far. So it, it's going to be a ridiculously good fight. And Jeremy Holloway has trained with Professor Crew Hodger Carroll. <laughs> I mean, it's just been – I also pronunciation. heard he worked with Professor Jimmo some. A little bit? That's J-I-M-M-O. Are you, to, are you trying to get him in trouble or something? Not like? A-L-L-E-N. I just want to make sure we understand this, okay? Make sure that we're all on the same page with where this young man is trained. <laughs> <laughs> before, before we get into the last of Luke three fights, and you're going to get yourself in trouble. Look at this guy here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he don't know what to do. Where is, is, where is the drought and where is their prethola? Of more talent, is it in the lightweight classes right now, or is it a yeah. drought? In the yeah, yeah, there's that, that, there's there's a serious okay. drought in uh in the upper weight classes of MMA, in this region at least. Uh, and my opinion, which doesn't count for much, I, I see it in the the bigger ranks as well. You, it, it's very hard to convince guys who could be concentrating on a career in football. Or, or rugby or hockey or whatever, you know, the, the bigger guys play, it's hard to convince those guys to come out and do a sport where they're going to get their brains beat in. <laughs> and, and, and that's why you saw, you know, in the, in, the, in the 70s, 70s and early 80s, you saw these great heavyweight boxers. And, and you know, when you got into the 90s and the 2000s, it sort of thinned out in the, that, that heavyweight division of boxing. Uh, and, and you're seeing it quicker in MMA because in MMA, not only do you not want to get your brains beat in when you can be playing NFL football or college football, but you don't get paid as much money as you get paid in boxing if you do make it to the big league. So in the amateur, we just don't see. We haven't had a – put it this way. 
we've had the least amount of champions in our heavyweight division, the second least amount of champions in our light heavyweight division, and our third least has been our middleweight division. Uh, even over the flyweights, which is pretty hard to find, but uh, you know it, it's just a, there's a drought there. It's, they're, they're not coming out. They're not they're not training and they're not getting involved. Okay. The only reason I asked that is because you did mention Adam D. Hart mm -hmm. in Purdue, which I remember when I first started getting into this. There were a lot of guys out there, a good many of them uh, in the, the there were some studs. Uh, there were some studs, and, and not only did you have Adam D. Hart in Purdue, but as they got more experience, then you got guys like Dennis and Pavia coming yeah. in behind them. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. And, and, and and Nick Smith and 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 you know, you could see the next generation coming in for the region, but and it sort of stopped. But then it just sort of stopped in those upper weights. Uh, we're going to move on to Willie Hosh versus Mike Stevens. Uh, Willie Hosh comes in at four and one. Mike Stevens comes in at five and two. Mike Stevens. Lightweight, you know, Willie Hosh is a freak. If Jeremy Holloway is one of the most athletic guys that's coming to North Carolina. We've been blessed here at the dark side of MMA by having, uh, you know, also having Willie. And uh, Willie's definitely one of the more athletic people that's ever come into the sport in, in this state. And, uh, you know, hey, look, man, Willie ain't at practice either. He's not a practice. Usually that would cause me to take Mike Stevens, but I'm in a good mood. I'm going to take Willie Hosh. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, last time Mike beat one of our guys from here, Lawrence Dennis. Uh, and pretty much caught him with a, with a flash knockout elbow and then put him in a rear naked choke. So, you know, absolutely all the respect in the world to Mike. He's great Muay Thai, trainer with Chris Claude Felter and Kyle Martin, the kid I was bragging about earlier. And uh, it should be a good fight, but I'm definitely going to have to go with uh, Nick God. <laughs> Nick God. Nick God. Willie Hosh getting the win over there. Warhead Willie Hosh. Uh, moving on to the last two fights of the night, got uh, Cody Gully, Big Cats. Going against uh, Joseph Mendes. Uh, Cody Gully, this is his first time stepping into the uh, fight like cage. This is the last fight in Charlotte, and then you got to win. Uh, Joseph Mendes, I don't know too much about. Uh, Joseph actually moved here from uh, up north and carries a 4 0 professional record. Uh, actually, I think he comes from Kentucky, maybe. Okay. But uh, carries a 4 0 professional record. He trains with Salvation MMA, which is an affiliate of uh, Team Rock. Yeah. Out there for Brandon Davis mm -hmm. and Chase Callaway, who's also on the card. And, uh, don't make Chase mad. No. <clears throat> don't make him mad. Sorry, man. I don't want to make you mad. I'm talking good about you, okay? Uh, and your team. Uh, Joseph Nathan Manns is his name, and he carries a 4 0 professional record. One of the more talented. Just looking him up on the internet. Very highly uh, thought of in, in the Kentucky and Tennessee region. And uh, I saw him at a grappling tournament. Guy's big. I mean, he's huge for 135 pounds. Oh, very big. He, he looked like it looked like he weighed 170 pounds last time I saw him at the grappling tournament. Looked like he had great, some very, very good wrestling, uh, some good jiu-jitsu skills to go with it. And uh, on the other side, juice box. I mean, the juice box is no joke, man. I, I think I said uh, I told someone after his victory over Trey Singleton that was probably the most excited I've gotten about a low-level entry pro fighter in a long time. Uh, and, you know, I, I have a, a, a history going back to Cody, you know, when, when he first started training at Team Husky with me and Johnny Husky, and uh, he is a talent to watch. Man, he's got his work cut out for him on this one. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. And, and as it stands right now, there's a strong possibility that the winner of this fight will fight Keith Richardson if Keith is still available in July. So uh, this is going to be good. I, I'm going to go with Cody Gully. But uh, you know we'll, we'll see how it plays out. They're both capable of beating beating one another. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Speaking of the rock star, Keith Richardson takes on Andrew Whitney. Keith comes in 13 and six. Andrew comes in at 10 and three at American Top Team. Right now, Keith is training at California to Ryan Faber, Chad Mendez. Man, all those guys out there getting in the work. Oh, rock star. Rock star. Right yeah. Punched in the eye and yeah, all that stuff. beat up the key. Yeah. Rock star. Man, well, I mean, 
look, obviously I'm going to pick Keith in this one. Of course. But, and, and, and right now Keith is at a point in his career where uh, he, is, he is walking that fine line of crossing over into the big leagues mm-hmm. and or falling off that line and having to say to himself, you know, what do I, what do I want to do with this? Yeah. Because right now he's 13 and 6. Uh, n- n- never never would I say that another loss would, would kill someone or that they would it would end their career, but uh, it would def- it may definitely change his outlook right. on, on where he wants to go. So every fight for him from now on uh, that's outside of the UFC or Bellator is pretty critical. Pretty critical. <laughs> and especially when you're fighting guys like Andrew Whitney and, and, and Diego. The, yeah, Diego, the last guy he fought. I mean, good. I mean, his last four fights have been rusty crowd and have been against some really quality. Well, actually, every fight he's had. Yeah. Uh, every, every fight, his last 10 fights have been very good, very good competition. He's fought UFC people. Uh, he's fought Bellator vets. He's, and now he's fighting one of America's top team's uh, biggest prospects, Andrew Whitney, who is just a monster to look at. I mean, this guy's jacked. And, uh, it's do it's do or die. It, it really is. It, it it's do or die for him. But when the the Keith that I'm talking to now, as a friend and and on a professional level, is a much different Keith Richardson. He's much more focused about his career. He's much more serious. Just a simple fact that he even left Rock Hill to go anywhere. I mean, to get Keith to leave Rock Hill and come to Charlotte to train was like pulling teeth. Uh, and it's because he's so loyal and he loves his family. And he loves his school. But his last three fights, you know, he's been making trips out to Alpha Male with Uriah Faber and those guys, and it's shown in the cage. And I was going to say that within the last year and a half, probably uh, even more after that Charles Rosa fight, yeah, uh, it's I've seen it and it's stepped up in such a way that you know he and he's doing a smart thing of putting in himself against pretty high level competition out there. Yes, the highest level you guys can probably uh, throw at him there. Yeah. So. Uh, I think the Rosa fight was an eye-opener for him. Yeah. I think it really uh, convinced him that he needed to make that trip down to 135. And I think, my opinion, from what I saw him at 135, he's tough to beat yeah. for anyone. I don't care who you are. You better be damn – I mean, you better be you better be world class. I mean, and we're talking, like, to, in my opinion, top top three, five yeah. in the world to, to deal with him because he, he brings a lot to the table. And I was going to say, is there anybody else in this region – uh, you know, without making a, a, a leap to, of course, the, a bigger show. Do you think there's anybody else in this region at 135 that can throw him trouble besides Whitney right now, who's right now in front of him? Um, you know, well, obviously, like I said, the co-main event, you know, there's two young men right there who have made it well known through their trainers, their managers, that they would welcome a fight with Keith Richardson. My personal opinion, do I think that those either one of those two guys could give him trouble? Uh, I think maybe maybe juice box down the road when he when he matures and his a- and, and, and he ages a little bit f- physically, you know, he, he might be competition. I don't think right now he could. I think the only per- people that I've seen in the region at 135 uh, that would give Keith, you know, minimum a, a decent fight, maximum possibly could could deal with him would be uh, Charlie Vivas, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, Charlie only has two professional fights, so that's that's not really even reasonable to, to think about. Uh, plus, for professional reasons, connections, that would more than likely never happen. Uh, and then second, Matt Tran. Okay. And, and I, I, you know, Matt Tran is the fight that, uh, that, that everybody would like to see. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think, want to see Matt Tran. Well, we would like to see Matt Tran fight, period. Yeah. I mean, that's like, he's sort of like Santa Claus. He comes around once a he, year. He, he was like Dennison for a little while, but now I've seen Dennison, who's not here anymore. I've seen yeah, Dennison I, pass twice in the past you month. You know, I have a great idea for the July main event. Yeah. Charlie Vivas versus Matt Trent. Ah, I like it. That's a great idea. Get on your phone. And, uh, do, 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 do. Hey, Matt. Yes. This is Cornbread. Yes. Would you fight Charlie Vivas in July? Oh yeah. Let me get off the slope. So Matt, ask him. Hello. And, uh, Matt. Uh, Matt. He hung up. He did. <laughs> I'm just joking. Now, though. I'm just joking, Tim. Calm down. Right now, Tim Holman just called the Georgia State Police to come uh, up here and arrest me. Good. For impersonation of a uh, Matt Trent. <laughs> Actually, it was you doing the. Imper- Anyways. All right. 
Yes, I sounded like Matt Trent. <laughs> yes. I like Matt, too. I, Matt, I like Matt's one too. of my favorite fighters. I like giving him a hard time. Uh, I, I want to see him fight again. I do, I I, do I want I do want to see him. Actually, you know, <laughs> any of those combinations for July, Matt Tran, Charlie Vivas, Cody Gully, Nathan Manns, those four guys, I'd love to have them get, get in the mix. But we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Yeah, but I can go ahead and give my pick for it. Oh, no, you can't. Yeah, you, don't can. have, you don't have the metrics. Really Charlie mean. Vivas wins by knockout. No, we're not taking it. It's not official. It's not even. It's even not, if, we're not even. It doesn't matter if it's official. We're not even summertime. This is my, this like is my show. Day I can do number what I want one. To. No. I want to make the damn right now, you're, 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 no, right now, this is my show. Your show is on Saturday. You're uh, in my gym. March 28th. I'm getting ready to get the hell out of here. I don't see it anymore. <laughs> March 28th at the Grady Cole Center. Get your tickets right now. You can hop up the two screens while you're watching us and order your tickets. We're getting them from your favorite fighter, Keith Richardson's down in Rock Hill. You got uh, John Henning, who's uh, who knows where the hell he's at. You got you. Can you buy tickets from you? No, I don't do tickets. That's a shame. Okay. Though I could use the money since I don't get paid anything. Sneak them in the back. Anything else you want to put in there? Hey man, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great show. Doors open at five. Fight start at six, which means we'll probably start at six thirty. But be there at 5.45 just in case because we've got some fantastic grappling matches. Uh, Joey Eldingo Loco Carroll is going to be taking on Joe Selecki. Rob Taylor will be taking on Jonathan Fennell. Uh, some fantastic grappling matches. You'll get to see some very high-profile MMA fights and some local, regional MMA celebrities like Hodger Carroll and Professor Jefferson Jimmo. That is J-I-M-M-O. Jimmo. <laughs> March 28th, Fight Lab 45. We'll see you guys there. Thank you, guys. Peace.